Driverless vehicles are all the rage. If you follow the news at all, you know they're coming in quick with Waymo, Cruise, Tesla, and many others. There are literally hundreds of players in the world working on this with various degrees of success. So we're going to have a quick chat about some of those. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> I got my good buddy Herbert joining me from Brighter. He is uh, the uh, shining star in the north for me. He's. Uh, I was telling. I was telling someone that uh, uh, in England. I said, "Oh yeah, Herbert lives close to me." He goes, "Oh, oh, wait, America close or close?" I go, "Oh, you know, two two and a half hours." He's yeah. like, "Yeah, that's that's like two countries." So yeah, okay. Well, uh, you know, driverless stuff hard to do. Uh, doing it well, harder still. Uh, did you know Ford is slashing the prices of its hands-free driver assist feature? The annual subscription to Blue's Clues, uh, it's time for mail, will now cost four ninety five, down from eight hundred, while a monthly subscription drops to forty nine ninety nine. It's just kind of highway and it's kind of limited highway why do you think they're dropping the price well first of all this is something they've introduced since what 2021 and uh it's it's something that they're trying to catch up with everybody else of course including tesla they need to cut the prices it's just not the same uh, value as what you would get in a tesla it's not the same value as what you would expect it to be able to do so obviously it's uptake it's one of the real reasons that they need to bring this down. If sometimes if you cut the price a certain amount, you'll get uh, people testing it out and trying a little bit more. I think this is uh, one of the things they need to do is just, you know, move away from offering something like that's so expensive when it doesn't do very much at all. Like if you find out, right, all the details of exactly what it can do and when it can do, it's very, very limited, right? Especially for the highway, certain speeds, certain times of day, uh, just a lot of things that it can't do quite yet. And and mostly certain roads. It is it is very limited. You can take hands off, and that is great. I have driven a Ford Lightning with Blue Cruise, and I found it to be fine. It was competent. Um, there are unmapped roads that you can also enable it on uh, that you're not supposed to, um, but there are different rules around that. Um, I would rate it as not as good as the free autopilot that comes with every Tesla sold. But there are other companies that are doing right. kind of the same thing. You know, you know, uh, GM owns Cruise Automation, which makes their Super Cruise. And that is, uh, it's got a lot more features. So if you look at what theirs has, uh, if you compare it to Tesla Autopilot, Autopilot, we're not comparing it to FSD because... So uh, can you haul a trailer with GM Super Cruise? Yes, you can, but not the others. Lane change on demand, uh, you can get it with not Rivian. Automatic lane change, now Tesla dominates in the also's. Uh, driver attention system, I mean, it's weird that Rivian doesn't have it. And there's all, and look at this map. These are the mapped roads. You'll notice there are some places that could use more mapped roads. The east has a lot more coverage than the west. But really, this looks more like a population density map because people live in cities. So there's a lot of roads where it works. And, uh, you know, we're up in this kind of area. Not as many, but there's a lot of mountains here. 240 million miles and counting. Now, there's all kinds of information here, but you know what's missing is the price. <laughs> Weird that GM's own page wouldn't have that. It turns out the reason is it's expensive. Mm. Uh, it is great. You can you can tow with it, but it is uh, not super cheap. It is, um, you have to have uh, certain vehicles. Wow. Super yeah. Cruise is only available on Silverados in high country trim and crew cab short bed. It's currently listed online as part of a $6,200 premium package. Yeah. Uh, and it requires, that actually requires the addition of two other packages with the total costs adding up to 7,300. So the cheapest Silverado you can get with Super Cruise is seven grand. And then you pay 25 a month after the first three years. So it becomes a subscription. They're trying to get it into the subscription model. 25 bucks a month though, that's not too bad. I mean, less than a buck a day to have highway yeah. driving. So let's go back to the website. So first of all, it's their website, right? So they're going to go and promote this as much as possible. What we're talking about here is highway driving. 
And what's shocking about this com this competitor comparison is this is something that Tesla's been doing for so well, for so long, for so well. Or highway driving is so efficient, so simple, so easy, and yet no one else is able to do this very well. Now, Super Cruise, they say that they can do it as well. Um, as you know, what happened to Cruise, right? Cruise is owned by GM. They had a major issue. They had to pull back. They had to fire their executive team because they, the you know their car dragged a person, unfortunately, underneath it. And then when the California DMV regulators dug into this, they they basically not only fined them, but they told them to stop all operations because they lied. They didn't share the information that was actually happening, which is that crews using LIDAR in the city streets were actually using quite a number of um, you know, teleoperators to follow it, to, to check it out. So on the highway, you know, I don't know if there's other restrictions that they're not sharing here, that even though it says these kind of features, there's sometimes, many times, these um, these these other competitors, there's limits to how fast they're driving, what time of day, those kind of things. So it's, um, sure, it's it's basically my point is that this was table stakes that every car company should have been offering like years ago. And the fact, the, to me, the biggest question on here, the last line item should be cost. And Tesla Autopilot, free with every vehicle, even the cheapest one, even the yeah, base Autopilot model rear wheel drive that it's was just it. discontinued. And it's they're charging 25 bucks. And then if you look at the roadmap, this is just highways. Mm -hmm. So, okay. It is just highways. So, I mean, it's like, you don't have to say that it was mapped. It was just, it's like any highway you can drive on because the highways are very easy, much easier to be able to say that you should be able to do this. So it's kind of a, a little bit disingenuous because obviously it makes it look like, oh my God, they can do autopilot in every, like the entire country. Highways. Well, yeah, these are these are all all well. I mean, these are country highways, but those are definitely highways. Good catch. Yeah. So, how do you think California feels about it? That's the state that you mm. know told Cruz to stop operating. Would you believe uh, California is actually on our side? California governor signs one driverless vehicle bill and vetoes two others. Wait, is that mm. good or bad? Mm -hmm. Well, the one he approved expands driverless vehicle rights, and the two he vetoed would have restricted them. Great. So all three of these are in the direction you'd want. Mm -hmm. Three bills that would regulate different types of autonomous vehicles landed on his desk. He vetoed one that would have banned autonomous trucks. Mm -hmm. He vetoed another that would set up data reporting requirements. And he signed a third bill that will create guidelines for what to do with first responders uh, when it uh, is in an accident. Yeah. Those are... Those are good things. Yeah. Those so are what we want to see. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's shocking that there was actually some uh, legislation that was brought up that uh, they want to ban autonomous trucks. I wonder who was funding that, of course, <laughs> because the funny thing is that autonomous trucks, semi trucks is something that I think what I've read in other analysis is that uh, governments, states, cities, they didn't want this so badly because it's such a great uh, boost immediately to productivity, to, to economy, right? Autonomous trucks, they want to promote that. And the autonomous truck, again, back to this concept of highways, it's much more easier to implement, much more safer, uh, because it's mostly always straight, mostly always, you know, clearly defined. Um, so that was interesting. That, that was good. I'm glad that, uh, you know, California governor decided to do this. This is all supportive of the future. I agree on all counts. The thing that trucks do most is the type of driving that humans do worst. We're very good at intense driving, at complicated driving. Right. But when it comes to staring between two lines and not getting hypnotized, mm -hmm. that is just not in our nature. And the beauty to me of an autonomous truck is it doesn't rush when it's behind schedule because it doesn't care because it's not going to get fired. It's not in a rush to hurry home and get to see his kids. He's not right. trying to get to the destination before his daily hours run out. Um, a quick one before we get to the exciting stuff. Late night uh, self-driving taxis launch in South Korea. Yeah, Korea. Makes sense. Yeah, vehicles will drive themselves on major roads with four or more lanes, while a safety monitor will take control on narrower residential streets. Uh, this is another step forward. Uh, the After Dark self-driving cabs have launched in Gangnam District in the uh, southern part of the capital. Um, there were other ones that were 
uh, geofenced very strictly, and these are more flexible. They'll only operate in a very small area, but with improved flexibility from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. What a great test. Yeah, this, this is, is what you forward. This is exactly what you expect. Cities who are just saying, hey, let's get into this game. We need to start doing this. There's three electric vehicles. A couple more are used as backup. That's what they'll do. They'll start it off at a very small square mile. Usually, if you listen to the ex, to the uh, co-CEO of, of uh, Waymo, she said they initially picked cities that have well, you know, uh, grid cities, right? Well-defined grid cities. And you will do it late at night. The city government will only say, yes, if you can do it late at night, less people. No, nobody walking around, less chances of anything happening. Um, and so that's what they'll do. A few hours in the middle of the night, just a small area, just to test. So it's great. And then this is something that sounds like it can scale. Unlike the Mercedes level three, which is just traffic jam assist. People say, well, they've got mm. it, you know, 30, 35 miles an hour. They'll just increase the speed. No, they won't. They don't have the compute. They don't have the hardware. Well, they'll just expand it onto surface streets. My friend, that problem yeah. is vastly larger than you understand. So uh, some more good news. I don't know. You in the mood for good news today, Herb? Oh. Tesla defeats yes. investor lawsuit over Musk's autopilot marketing. And technically, this isn't quite done. They're, they are allowed to refile something for reconsideration by Halloween, uh, but I wouldn't consider it spooky. Um, mm -hmm. It's when a company's got money, everybody wants a little bit of it. I know you have a company. May I have some money? Nah, never mind. We'll try mm -hmm. again. We'll try again later. I, I'll, I'll find a sneakier way to do it. So this is just good news. Um, Someone, when I posted this on X, said, ah, oh, yes, lawfare at its finest. This is a civil thing. They're after money. That's all they want. They saw an opportunity to maybe get some money. And uh, it didn't work. So uh, because we're in a good news mood, I don't know how you feel, but I feel good about good news. Cybertruck is driving. When we saw that list, when you saw the list of all the things that Tesla was going to accomplish in September, what was your first reaction? Well, obviously it was very long and surprisingly they hit every single one of them. I saw the list and I thought, yeah. boy, I'm skeptical. I know Q is going to be all over this saying it's complete nonsense. Elon always lies. Right. But this isn't Elon. This is the, the team. Exactly. This is the, this is the AI team. These are the people who answer to Elon. And they knew what they were working on. And then, of course, all of it happened. And, uh, and, and Tesla AI is like, did I stutter? <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I think the, the, the real significance of this, that Cybertruck is now have full self-driving, is that it's a totally different form factor. And um, they felt comfortable enough to launch it. So whenever they, um, you know, obviously test they're full self-driving. They have to have their vision-based model with the cameras around the car. But to then tr redo all of that into another m different form factor, that's what's, you know, the, these people said, oh, it's going to take so many more training data, brand new, you know, much more data sets, completely different. And the reason why the Cybertruck's unique is because it's got rear-wheel driving too. So it doesn't drive like all vehicles do. We're just thinking, you know, you can pretty well map exactly how the back end's going to move. The Cybertruck's back end moves very differently than the front end, right? And how it's turning radius is very different. We saw uh, Cyber, uh, Chuck Cook. I had him on a show, and he did. Uh, he had one of the very first FSDs in Cybertruck drives when he did his, you know, beautiful unprotected left turn. The Cybertruck took a much wider turn than his other cars would. And so it was just very interesting to see that this is a completely different vehicle. It needs to know who it is, right? Like, how big am I compared to what I was before, right? In Model 3s, for example. And then it shows that it can then be used for the semi. And so we started seeing a, a, a spy shot of a semi that's basically with LiDAR trying to test ground truth data so that they're preparing that for FSD. So if Tesla can show you that it can create FSD in every form factor of any kind of vehicle you can think of, including semis, now they can say, I can partner with any car company and I can make that autonomous as well because we figured this out. We know how to you know, do this um, and it won't take us as long as people were, were thinking that they would per car form factor. 
The cameras are in different places because they're higher up. Um, it's got a bumper cam. I don't think that's used for FSD as much as parking. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all, if, if I were to ask you to give me the biggest challenge for porting something from SNX and 3 and Y, you'd say, well, a big truck that's bigger with rear wheel steer and a semi. I don't know what else you'd put on the list that would make it harder. Something smaller would be easier. And well, you put uh, it well, on a robot, <laughs> well, <laughs> a five yes, foot but... six robot. And that's the same thing, right? It's FSD oh. that's in the bot. It just happens as cameras are in different places. And then it needs to understand the environment, it needs to be able to walk around in this environment and engage in the environment. That's what they're saying. This is robotics AI and it doesn't matter. Just, I like what Robert Scoble said before, right? It's just basically the, the computer wakes up, takes a look at through its cameras and it goes, oh, I got two cameras. Oh, I've got 12 cameras. I got eight cameras. Oh, I'm a semi. <laughs> oh, but I'm, 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 I'm less worried about that and more concerned with, could it be licensed? And I think the yeah. answer is at this point, clearly, yes. Is that, well, right. But we, we can't make it spend a year testing. Well, good news. Uh, they've installed more compute yeah. and by more, I mean a lot more. And now that they've got some of these harder training cases out of the way, I think it can accelerate. Uh, last little bit of good news, and I know you hate good news. Uh, we've got, I don't know if you've heard, there's a little event coming up in a uh, next week. This is going to be exciting. Uh, I call this event Y'all Robot because I don't have a ticket, but uh, this is going to be perhaps a big deal. Would you call this shift seismic or tectonic? How would you describe the magnitude of this? Well, I think I'll describe it the way Elon did, and which is that this is going to be the most, it's going to go down in the history books is one thing he said. And then the other thing he said about it is that it's going to be the most important event in Tesla's history other than the Model 3 unveil. The Model 3 unveil, the reason why that was important was because that was a make or break the company. The company could have died if the Model 3 was not accepted by the gov um, the consumers if they didn't want to buy it. And uh, because they were going through, right, it's going to go, it's going to transform the company from a regular car company or just like a niche sports car maker into this, you know, mass market scaled company, a real auto company, right? Mm -hmm. Scale, because scale matters, got to go global, got to be able to sell millions of cars. And so Model 3 didn't, you know, just didn't strike that nerve with the consumers. They didn't like it. The company's dead. In this case, in a way, it's similar because they've got their electric vehicle, uh, which is a fantastic car. People love this car, but everybody's going to catch up. You got the Chinese catching up. You got other people able to make these cars. Eventually, it's going to become a commodity. You'll still do very well. But he's already said many times that, you know, that you need to be able to have autonomy because whoever hits autonomy is going to be the first to just wipe out all the other cars. Like the car doesn't matter anymore. It's the same difference between yeah. a car versus a horse and buggy. That's what this is. So if this event convinces, convince, convinces investors, convinces national analysts, convinces consumers that Tesla is actually an autonomy world, then the entire world will change. And this is going to change the world, right? It's going to change how cities are built and how you design things. Uh, ownership of houses and work and the, your lifestyle, everything's going to change if there is a, such a thing as a robo-taxi. Prices will fall significantly. Uh, transportation becomes basically free or, or very, very affordable. And of course, the environment. I love that you brought up the Model 3 unveiling because that is, at the time I was excited, but I didn't get it. I didn't. I didn't get it. I didn't understand the magnitude of what I was facing. And it was staring right at me and I couldn't see it because this is, you know, again, you'll never actually have a $35,000 Model 3. Uh, you do. We have it now. Now, after the inflation, after all that inflation, you've still got one. Yeah. It's uh, amazing. But I'll be honest, uh, horses were self-driving and we're just now getting back to that. What I, <laughs> all I wanted, Herbert, was a longer horse. You know, like a four-seater horse <laughs> is all I ask for. And I didn't get it. So yeah, I just, think I need to go. The fuel is just apples. I mean, come on, guys. It's so much cheaper. And it's really good for the environment. <laughs> yeah. Let's think about horses. Yeah. 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 If uh, I'll see if I can find that mad scientist. Uh, you know what? You and I probably have one on speed dial. <laughs> 
Guys, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? I'll leave it in the comments below and stay tuned to Juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots after you come back from watching three videos on Brighter with Herbert. It is your homework.